And so our next session is called From Gaza Strip to Silicon Strip, Lessons Learned Building a Frontier Tech Ecosystem. We know that being an entrepreneur in many markets around the world, including Iran, can be very difficult. But we're going to hear from someone who's actually been doing this in the heart of Palestine and the Gaza Strip. So I'd like to welcome Ryan Sergil to the stage, who is the director of Gaza Sky Geek. And he will be um, joined by his partner, Saeed Hassan, coming directly from the Gaza Strip via Skype, who's the CEO and founder of Zumro. So please join me in welcoming Ryan to the stage, who oddly enough has done business in all the countries bordering Iran, but not Iran itself, where he's worked with people. So maybe Thanks. today's the day. Thank you, Ryan. <laughs> Hi, everyone. How's everyone doing? Um, so as Roya said, uh, I'm the director of Gaza Sky Geek. We are Gaza's first co-working hub and startup accelerator. Um, I've spent most of the past decade working with entrepreneurs in Iraq, Afghanistan, Pakistan, uh, the UAE. I've just been circling Iran, so maybe one day I'll, I'll get there. Um, but of all the places that I've been, I really have to say, I, I think Gaza is, is unique. Um, it's unique not just for the amazing, uh, friendly people uh, who live and work there and for its very unfortunate political circumstances, um, but it's unique because it is a dense, educated, urban cluster where the internet and technology really has the potential to immediately change millions of people's lives. Um, we at Gaza Sky Geeks believe it's not just possible but essential to help Gazans sell online products and services because for the past decade, two million Gazans have been basically under a blockade, confined to an area about the size of the San Francisco Peninsula. Um, for a Gazan uh, to travel, it's very, very difficult. They're denied the freedom of movement and trade, so running a traditional business is, is quite hard because of border closures. For a Gazan to travel to a conference like this in Barcelona, they would have to get uh, six different permits from up to four different governments and go through six different checkpoints in order to travel here. It's extremely difficult. A case in point is my partner and the co-founder of Gaza Sky Geek, Saeed Hassan. Uh, Saeed was unable to get permission from the authorities to travel uh, to be here today, and he's really the one who should be up on the stage uh, speaking to you about building a frontier market ecosystem. But Fortunately, we can at least catch Saeed in via Skype uh, because the internet in Gaza is great. Um, Gaza has also been through three different wars in the past decade. Um, Saeed's home in 2014 was bombed. 30% uh, of the people who were displaced are still in temporary housing, and about 70% of the population is still reliant on some kind of humanitarian aid. The power is still intermittent. You only get about six hours of power from the grid each day. Um, even in our space, where we have batteries and generators, we sometimes work in the dark. As you can see here, this is our co-working space. Um, so if you're a young person in Gaza, it's, it's very easy to despair. Um, you have a lot to complain about, a lot to be angry about. 73% um, of the population is under the age of 30, and when People graduate from college. There's five different universities in Gaza City alone. Um, when they graduate from college, 70% of college graduates are unemployed. This mural, which is across the street from our office, um, is, is beautiful, I think, but it's a heartbreaking reminder to look at it every day, um, to be reminded of the isolation and the despair that you confront if you're a young person in Gaza because you're completely hopeless. Instead, this is the image that we like to think of as Gaza's future. And that's because the internet and tech is the one sector of the Gazan economy that is not subject to a blockade. Um, Gazans are denied many online services that we take for granted, like access to PayPal, and there's no wireless data for your phone uh, because they can't bring the equipment in. Uh, but Gaza's fiber internet ring is its lifeline to the world. The internet is strong. Uh, there are about 1,500 computer science graduates coming out of those universities every single year. Um, 
the cost of engineering, design, and translation work is, is low. It's very competitive, and it's becoming an outsourcing hub for Saudi web development um, and other companies in Egypt. A, if you're a Gazan developer, you are 100% employed, and you can earn in a month what an average Gazan might make in a year. Because of that, uh, Google and Mercy Corps, the international humanitarian development organization, came together and launched Gaza Sky Geek with the idea in mind that anyone uh, should be able to earn an income and a livelihood through the internet in Gaza. We have a long-term ambition to transform Gaza into an internationally competitive tech hub that is known globally for high quality, low cost online products and services. Now, this is an ambitious goal, um, and it's one that we've realized uh, really requires an ecosystem building approach, um, from community building to getting Gazans exposure to global expertise and tech trends, to hands-on work with Gaza's most talented founders and coders. Um, so let's start with community building. Um, one thing that I think is taken for granted in frontier tech ecosystems and emerging markets is really the importance of building community and building community in a physical space. Um, this often gets overlooked um, maybe as a novelty or a luxury, but it really having a vibrant, energetic space that developers and startup founders want to hang out in is extremely important. So we've put a lot of emphasis on making a very vibrant, bright space that can be a hub for all of the different aspects of the ecosystem to come together. We've gotten some inspiration from this uh, from Google, and we're a Google for Entrepreneurs Tech Hub partner, one of only two in the Middle East. Um, they have launched what are called Google campuses. And so you can think of us as kind of like a Google campus for Gaza. We're not an official campus, but uh, the, the, the model of this, uh, a great space in an urban area that brings together uh, designers, people with tech expertise, events, workshop spaces, an area for people to convene and learn uh, to launch the next great innovations is the approach that we've taken in Gaza. So as part of what we're doing, we're trying to bring everybody under one roof, um, from freelancers who are trying to connect on Upwork uh, to do software development and graphic design, to startup teams that we're incubating, to um, more mature tech companies that we rent offices to in our space as a source of income, uh, as well as broader ecosystem partners, so academics, software engineers, uh, individual founders of companies. We try to bring everybody together, convene them in one space um, so that they can actually share ideas. We actually find that in really nascent contexts like these, um, it's amazing how siloed software developers are um, and startup founders are. Uh, there isn't quite the culture of mingling and networking and sharing ideas and best practices. So that's why we started the very first Tech Tuesdays in Gaza, trying to bring founders together and developers together uh, to share ideas, to get talking, um, to, to, to seed the next startups that may come in uh, into our acceleration program. When we talk about building community, we're also really specifically focused on tech talent, um, developing the community and the talent that can actually build the products and services uh, that can be sold online. And so we place a lot of emphasis and, and we work a lot on hackathons. Hackathons are great ways to develop a community, bring people together, and force people to learn about new technologies. Um, this is also a great way for us to evaluate startup teams who we bring into our program to see who really has the ability to execute. When we run our hackathons in Gaza, we actually have a policy of no pitch decks, uh, only live demos. We think this is really important, um, even though some people might consider it kind of harsh, um, to actually demonstrate that you can hack together a prototype um, as part of your startup team. Um, another sort of thing that we've seen in, in a very nascent ecosystem, or especially in a post-conflict area like Gaza, um, especially when there's a lot of development money flowing around, it's actually very easy to get an idea funded if you're an entrepreneur. 
um, if you just have a glossy pitch deck and an idea, and maybe you don't actually have the team or the ability to execute. So we think it's really important for teams to be able to come together and hack together a product um, over a short period of time to demonstrate that execution. Just this past weekend, actually, this is a photo from a hackathon that we ran uh, just seven days ago. We brought together 60 developers, 50 of whom were women, um, to hack solutions for women's health, safety, and economic empowerment. Um, the winning team shown here developed an application uh, for Palestinian women to learn about and access all of their rights under the Palestinian, Palestinian legal code as it relates to marriage, divorce, and inheritance. Um, because almost 50% of women in Palestine don't actually know their legal rights when it comes to those issues. Which brings me to uh, another point that is really important when you're thinking about the development of an emerging ecosystem, and that is reach out to women. Get women involved from the earliest stages of your hackathons, your tech meetups, assign somebody to do that outreach. Um, it's extremely important to, to, especially in Gaza, I've found um, women are without a doubt the hardest working, the most resilient, dedicated founders that we've had the opportunity to work with, and on average are better computer scientists. There's no stigma in Gaza um, if a woman is good in science, technology, a math field. But what we do find is that there is a lot of community support that's needed to encourage them to make a career out of it, um, to launch a business or to, to pursue a career and be a breadwinner um, being an online freelancer or developer. So from everything that we do, from the community building stage to the startup acceleration phase, we try to build women's inclusivity in, into everything that we do. We also try to build community around specific tech stacks like, like Python. Um, to get developers focused around just one or two frameworks, we're really trying to cultivate self-learning and peer learning. And it's a little bit easier to do that if you focus around a smaller number of frameworks. Um, take Mustafa, for example. So Mustafa is a designer who taught himself with the help of his co-founder, Raham, Python and JavaScript. Uh, Mustafa is now the CEO of a uh, prototyping app for Arab web designers called MockApp. Um, and learning how to code uh, for Mustafa not only boosted his income as a freelancer, but it also really gave him this sense of liberation. I mean, there's a psychological aspect to being able to build something and sort of self-actualize your ideas. And so the coding education component of what we do, we think, is also really important, and we can't really put a price tag on that. We wouldn't be able to do the work that we do uh, if it wasn't for another type of community which we build, which is a community of almost 300 pro bono mentors who work with our startup teams and developers over Skype and also come to Gaza in person. Um, we've brought probably around, we've brought 100 uh, startup engineers or startup experts and software engineers to Gaza in the past two years. All are extremely passionate about donating their time and tech skills in order to grow Gaza's, Gaza's economy. Um, and it is one of the most powerful things uh, that we've seen um, that can help Gazan entrepreneurs launch uh, their products and their startups forward. So ties to outside mentorship, to expertise and professional opportunities are also one of the most important things that we can do for a nascent startup ecosystem because not all professional development and skill transfer can come through a fiber optic cable. So we work tirelessly whenever possible to try and get Gazan entrepreneurs outside of Gaza. And we're able to do this, we can apply for, for permits from the authorities uh, because of our, because we're a program of Mercy Corps. Um, so we try to bring people in to share their knowledge from the outside tech world and bring people out in order to get uh, more hands-on technical skills. Because you can't, in Gaza, get an internship at a place like Google, where you can build those soft skills and those technical skills to really build globally competitive products. So take Mustafa again, for example. So he, we got him a special permit to go to a startup pitch competition in the West Bank. He won best early stage startup uh, idea in Palestine. It was also the first opportunity for him to actually meet with seed investors who then invested in his company. 
Um, and it's all the more remarkable because this is Musafa's first time outside of Dublin. Um, and again, because this is a place that is not much larger than the island of Manhattan. Um, and most Gazans that we work with have never been more than 20 kilometers from Israel. We also work with corporate partners like Microsoft and Klarna, the Swedish e-payment company, to send uh, founders and developers outside for immersive experiences, even if just for a couple weeks at a time, where they can learn product management best practices, participate in daily stand-ups. This kind of exposure that they then bring back to Gaza is hugely impactful for a nascent ecosystem like this that's closed off from the outside world. Um, Mohammed, who was one of the, the founders who went to Stockholm um, and spent some time at Klarna, he's now the CEO of one of the most successful uh, gaming startups in Gaza and even in the region. Um, they were just featured in Forbes after their most recent game got over half a million downloads in just three weeks, a game called uh, Ramadan Challenges. Um, and they are now about to raise their second round of funding. They're hiring up uh, additional developers. Um, and they're probably one of the, the most interesting startups that we've worked with in the past year. They're also uh, the only startup that has ever been admitted to a Silicon Valley accelerator. Their CTO, Saeed, just returned from Silicon Valley after participating in Black Box Connect's 17th uh, startup acceleration round. Um, it was a harrowing experience getting him a permit to just get outside of Gaza. He missed half the program uh, because he couldn't get all the, the permits together in time. But um, you can see him here with his Google and his black box sweatshirt. Um, very, very proud. It's a huge milestone for Gaza for him to have been taking that step. So when these people come back, it's, it's hugely impactful. Um, they're now the most knowledgeable uh, mentors that we could have in our startup ecosystem. Um, and it's, they really feel the, the obligation to give back to the community. So they participate in all of our hackathons, our startup weekends. They're kind of the first generation of uh, founders and developers who've been outside and gotten that tech experience and are now bringing it back. So all of this uh, is helps bring, uh, elevate the skill level of freelancers and outsourcers, but it's also the pipeline for our startup acceleration and incubation program. So after a rigorous uh, induction period, we take startup teams from idea to product launch over the course of five months. And then if they're qualified, we introduce them to investors like Dave McClure, who some of you saw on Thursday, who's an advisor and close friend uh, of Gaza Sky Geek. This is one of our startups um, that won second place in a startup competition in Amman uh, that 500 startups helped host. Um, and we facilitated 11 investment offers into Gazan startups, the very first venture investments into Gazan tech companies uh, in the past two years, ranging from about $20,000 to $50,000 ticket sizes. Um, and these companies are targeting all markets that are outside of Gaza. So big market opportunities like in the GCC or Egypt, um, really tapping into the growth and demand for online content in Arabic. Um, it's the fastest growing language online, highest smartphone penetration rates in the world. So there is, despite all the uncertainty around Gaza, um, huge market opportunity here that for-profit investors see. Even though the team is in Gaza, the product is in the cloud. Um, and it's actually really possible to launch a business purely through a fiber optic cable from Gaza. Um, if all of this ecosystem building work sounds like a lot, it is. Um, None of it would be possible though without the amazing team that I have behind me, uh, especially Saeed Hassan, uh, pictured here on the right, um, who is really the founding drive and the energy behind Gaza Sky Geek and really developing this function as an ecosystem. Uh, so with that, I thank you very much and I'm gonna turn it over to Gaza and Saeed Hassan, who should be with us on Skype. Hey, Saeed. Hello. Hi, Bridges. <laughs> <laughs> See, you can't block us out. Like, we're, we're connected all over. <laughs> so, uh, I guess Ryan told you more about Gaz Geeks and how everything started. I'll tell you more about my story and 
why I believe in gas cables and why I'm still working here and why I'm still in Gaza. So I'm a business administrator, uh, administration like graduate. I graduated from Egypt and I went back in Gaza, to Gaza. And I had like so many entrepreneurial ideas. I was like thinking about like having a career in marketing and everything, but because of the isolation, because Gaza was closed, me and my generation, like the people who graduated with me, we didn't have like an opportunity to do so. So we had to work on other jobs that are not related to our expertise, that are not related to our dreams or passion. So for myself, I was like a grocery admin and I started like my own sandwich like startup back in 2010, 2009. And most of my friends who were graduating from uh, engineering schools, who are A students, like they opened their own little shops and they almost forgot everything that they've learned in college because they didn't have any place where they can execute what they've learned. <coughs> in 2010, I've had the opportunity and I was one of the lucky ones <coughs> to go to Egypt and pursue a career in marketing with one of the biggest like, companies now, which is Souq.com the first like Arabic startup that reaches a $1 billion evaluation. And from there, I became their marketing manager. And in 2012, I was the best Facebook marketing uh, uh, marketeer on the Middle East by the Man Arab Awards, me and my team. And I've had like a very successful career in, in Souq. And when I returned to Gaza, I thought that I have to forget everything about startups, everything about marketing, everything about entrepreneurship because I'm going back to the place where I used to be like a grocery admin where that was like the ultimate job for me or like to join a data entry position at the UNRWA or somewhere else. But I was happy to see like a startup weekend which the Mexico was throwing and organizing in Gaza. I went there and I've seen people from all over the world, like international mentors coming and believing in Gazans and giving them opportunities. So I was a mentor at Startup Beacon. And after that, I was a mentor at Gazas Geeks, like first boot camp, which was preparing for the acceleration. <clears throat> and I've seen like how many, how much the little knowledge that we have changes the, the things in, in Gaza. And uh, back in the days we had like Eliana, the, our co-founder in uh, we thought like by starting an accelerator in Gaza and a co-working hub and a place where Gazans can have like people who believe in them. So we started Gaza Sky Geeks. And Gaza Sky Geeks aim and what, what makes us believe in working in this because if, if we don't believe in Gazans entrepreneurs, if we don't be, give the, the people the opportunity to meet with other people like Dave McClare, we make them believe that they're connected to the rest of the world. Nobody in Gaza will. So this is a huge mission for us. This is why we stay up more than any other organization in Gaza. Like we're operating until 6 or 7 p.m. every day from 9 to 7. So one of the major things that makes us like work at Gaza Skyx, this is the only place that, that a Gazan can walk in with an idea about building the next Uber. And people will say, okay, let's go to the drawing board. Let's think how we can do it. We can connect you to whatever mentor you want from all over the world. And we believe in you. We provide you with facilities and we provide you with the most precious thing that an entrepreneur would, would, would like, a community that believes in you, a community that is ready to support you, and a believers who will work with you all, on, all over the world, along the way to the end. So <clears throat> this is what makes Gaza Skyx a huge, uh, opportunity for us to benefit Gaza, to benefit our community. Because my friends who graduated with me now don't know anything about computer engineering. Don't know anything about like what they learned in school because nobody gave them this opportunity. Everybody was giving them like jobs that would, would give them salaries for three months or so and it's not related to what they're doing. But here at Gaza we, we we encourage them to start a business at the thing that they love and that they, they believe they can change something with. So basically this is like why I'm working with Gaza Sky Geeks. Now at Gaza Sky Geeks, I'm launching my own startup and I'm targeting Saudi Arabia. And I managed by the help of Gaza Sky Geeks to open a bank account in the US 
which was a big dream for me. And my startup received its funding like a week ago. And now we're in business. We're hiring six people in Gaza and everybody believes that we can reach and we can become a big startup in the region. So this is what Gaza Skies can, can give us and can give other people in the community. So this is basically my story. I'm not Yeah.